Happy New Year, everyone. It is the perfect time of the year to start making new habit changes. So why not make some eco-friendly ones? So let's dive into 24 beginner swaps for living zero waste in 2024. But even if you are a beginner, you still might find some things in here, some tips in here, even if you are an intermediate or advanced zero waster. So you might as well watch and stay tuned to see if you can take any of these and implement any of these into your life, no matter where you are in your zero waste journey. Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live zero waste. And if you're looking for more specific eco-friendly New Year's resolutions, you can check out this video up here. Anyway, let's dive into these beginner swaps. And if I miss any that you think are really, really good beginner swaps, definitely leave them down below. I don't think we could have started this video any other way. That is with a reusable water bottle. This is a classic zero waste swap. I still have my very first reusable water bottle that I ever bought for myself while living zero waste. And I still use it to this day. If you get a really high quality one, mine wasn't even like super high quality. I got it on Amazon. You can really make them last for a long, long time. I think a lot of people also buy this before they even become like truly zero waste just because of how much money it can save. Imagine if you, just one person, cut out two plastic water bottles per day. That's 730 water bottles per person per year. Now imagine if you kept that water bottle for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years. And imagine if you influenced the rest of your family to use reusable water bottles and your coworkers and your classmates. The real impact that just a simple reusable water bottle can have on the planet. Well, I did get mine from Amazon. I don't recommend you do that. I recommend you get something higher quality like a hydro flask or a clean canteen. I will leave any brand recommendations from this video in the blog post that you can check out down below. Next is reusable grocery bags. Now this swap didn't really save you money when I first started living zero waste about five years ago. But honestly, as we get farther and farther into taking the climate crisis and the waste crisis seriously, it's actually becoming a way that you can save money. A lot of grocery stores will now actually give you a discount if you bring your reusable bag, as well as they will charge a tax for plastic bags. The fewer plastic bags you use, the less money you're going to spend on buying these plastic bags. But our Sprouts in Las Vegas did give me a 10 cent discount per bag instead of charging me 10 cents per bag. So I didn't just save money, I actually kind of made money. Anyway, I have a few recommendations depending on what you prefer, what your needs are. If you're looking for a really big option, like you do a lot of grocery shopping, I recommend Lotus Trolley Bag. They fit right into your cart. Everything can be organized as a freezer bag. You can just lift them out, put them right in your, in your trunk. They're really easy to maneuver and they're really, really big. But maybe you're looking for a smaller option. I recommend Bagu Bags. They're made from recycled material. They pack down really, really small. I like that you can keep them in a fanny pack or a purse a lot easier than like the Lotus Trolley Bag. But also if you're looking for like a free or very low cost option, go to your thrift store. I see tote bags all the time at the thrift store. Similar to that is produce bags. Now I just quit using produce bags. I used reusables for a little bit when we lived in Japan. Once we got to Vegas, I'm just like, I don't want to deal with that anymore. It's so much easier to not have to hassle with them at the grocery store, in my opinion, and instead just go and, you know, grab a few apples, put them in my cart, grab a few carrots, put them in my cart. It would help keep things more organized, sure, but I didn't like the hassle of bringing that many bags into the grocery store. But if you do want to use reusable produce bags, I recommend getting something made of natural material such as cotton or hemp and not plastic. Of course it's reusable so like it's not the worst thing to use reusable plastic but it's less harmful to create and dispose of natural materials. Next is a reusable coffee cup. Now I'm not talking about like a mug that you use in your home. I'm talking about one that you can take to a cafe and get your coffee to go. This is another swap that can technically make you money because plenty of cafes these days give you a discount for bringing in your own cup. I've seen some like myself in person actually give up to a dollar discount on bringing your reusable coffee cup. But of course we're not here just for the money. We're here for the waste saving as well. I keep mentioning money. If you want more ways to learn about how zero waste can actually save and make you money, you can check out this video. So if you're an avid coffee or tea drinker, this can save you a lot of waste by bringing your reusable coffee cup to your local cafes. And notice how I said local cafes, quit supporting Starbucks people. Even if you get a paper coffee cup, it's not recyclable. Imagine if you just had a sheet of paper that you poured a, a cup of coffee into, it would leak all over the place. It's not leaking because it's coated with plastic on the inside rendering it non-recyclable or very difficult to recycle. Now, if you get iced beverages in a plastic cup, that is recyclable, but at the end of the day, plastic recycling rates are just not very good. And if you don't clean out the cup, it's not going to be recycled anyway. So it's best to just go with your reusable. A swap I wish I had tried so much earlier. And honestly, I suppose it was one of my pretty early on swaps. Now that I think about it, I had it in Japan. That's a silicone baking mat. This can save so much waste and honestly, like energy and time on your part as well. What this is, is literally just a silicone sheet that you lay on your baking mats. If you're like making baked potatoes, cookies, oven roasted vegetables, so many different things that you can bake in the oven. I even use them to freeze stuff because they're non-stick, meaning you don't have to buy as much oil to grease your trays. You don't have to buy as much parchment paper or tin foil. 
to like line your trays. They're naturally non-stick, meaning also they're so much easier to clean than crusty metal baking sheets. Another kitchen swap that I absolutely love, now this one I really didn't get early on and I wish I did, is Misto. It's essentially, you know those little Pam spray oil things? It's one of those, but reusable. You fill it with your own oil at home, you pump it to add pressure, and then you spray it. I love how reusable this is, and as well as how much money it can save. And actually, Pam, those little spray bottles, because of their aerosol, they're not generally accepted for recycling because of the like high risk of exploding. While we're in the kitchen, let's start actually using our reusable plates, bowls, cups, and utensils. Yes, I know we're all guilty of it. I know some people will say this is not very common, especially people who live outside the United States, but in the US, it is extremely common to use disposables at home on a regular basis. Now I understand some people have, have a need to use disposables, whether that be a disability, a mental illness, too much time or to not enough time rather. But if you're able-bodied and you have a few minutes to spare, I highly encourage you to start using your reusables. And I know we all already have them as well. If not for the planet, do it to save money. Like some other swaps, this will actually save you a lot of money in the long run. And if you don't have dishes or you don't have enough, maybe that's your issues, you just don't have enough of them to keep up, I highly recommend you just go to the thrift store and get some cheap ones. This next swap is super, super easy. There's no learning curve at all. That is getting bamboo or recycled toilet paper. The only difference is it might cost a little bit more depending on what brand you're already buying. But I did a full price breakdown in this video if you wanna learn more about comparing the popular who gives a crap brand to other popular brands like Charmin. I love how easy this swap is and how much waste it can save. And if you're like, but I'm still throwing something away, how is it saving waste? Trees are super resource intensive to grow when it comes to water, transportation, milling, and all that sort of stuff just to wipe our butts. I prefer supporting the recycling industry, so I like to buy the recycled toilet paper, but bamboo is fine as well. I've tried both of them from Who Gives a Crap. They're very much the same texture. And bamboo does not require nearly as much resources to grow, and it also grows back when you cut it, which is really, really cool. Let's talk about changing up our teeth care routine. <laughs> Our oral hygiene as with a bamboo toothbrush and we're gonna talk about several different toothpaste options So traditional toothbrushes and toothpastes are not recyclable ever Just because of the type of plastic that they are the size that they are as well as your traditional toothpaste tubes are a plastic metal combo Rendering them non-recyclable personally. I didn't find much of a learning curve with the bamboo toothbrushes It did feel like a little bit weird at first, but I got used to it and now I even prefer it now the toothpaste on the other hand I think does require a little bit of a learning curve and some getting used to because a lot of these toothpaste are they might not foam up as much as your traditional toothpaste they might not have as strong of a flavor as your traditional toothpaste so some actual pastes that i recommend if you want a plastic one that is toms of maine and hello they are both like good for the environment when it comes to ingredients as well as recyclability now if you're like why is plastic good for the environment a fully plastic toothpaste tube is much better for the planet than a plastic metal toothpaste tube because one it requires fewer resources as well as it's actually recyclable. But there are some toothpaste in aluminum as well from Hey Humans and David's toothpaste. I don't like those ones personally because they don't have fluoride in them and I'm very cavity prone, so I need fluoride in my toothpaste. Now, toothpaste tabs. I have tried several brands and I cannot stand the texture. I have some texture sensitivities, so I just simply can't handle that as a person. I know so many people who love toothpaste tabs. I will leave some brands, some popular brands linked in the blog post, but again, they're not my personal recommendation, so take that as you will. Speaking to the bathroom, the next is to change up your shampoo and conditioner routine. And many of these options are concentrated, meaning you don't need to use as much product on your hair to get the same effects as using a bigger amount of the non-concentrated stuff that you would normally buy in plastic. So my recommendation for an actual like liquid shampoo and conditioner is from Plain Products. You can learn more about them in detail in this video, so much detail about actually how their refill program works because once your bottles are empty, you send them back and they reuse them. My favorite shampoo bar of all time is a small brand I found in Las Vegas, like literally a mom and pop shampoo bar company. It's called the Coconut Crush. They smell so lovely. They suds up so well. My hair is like silky and smooth and shiny. Absolutely obsessed with it. And then if you want to try shampoo powder, I recommend Modern Kind. I've tried them and I thought the whole thing was very, very interesting. It's not my favorite zero waste shampoo option, but I still really like it. Next is deodorant. Your traditional deodorant packages are typically not recyclable. But of course, this isn't something that everybody can just cut out. Like you can just simply stop using deodorant if you want to, but so here are a few options for you. I'm currently using Wild Deodorant Refills. It's a little cardboard piece that you add into their reusable deodorant base essentially, and it twists and functions. It's the same shape as a traditional deodorant stick, which is really, really cool. I like the shape of it and the functionality. 
Um, but if you want something that's just totally disposable, my favorite is Native. Native is really expensive though, so it's not my favorite swap for that. But I do like that it is also comes in cardboard, is the same shape as like a traditional deodorant stick. And I like their smells, they're not too strong, but there's still a little something there. And I actually have more zero waste deodorant recommendations in this video. If I'm out of cards, it's down below. When it comes to cleaning, drying your hands and so forth, ditch the paper towels and use rags and towels instead. This is easily one of the lowest cost swaps on this list because I guarantee everyone out there already has some rags lying around that you've accumulated over the years. Like sure, you could buy new rags, but why bother when you probably already have a drawer full? And if you want more rags, like specifically for cleaning up messes and stuff, just take an old t-shirt and cut it into squares or rectangles, whatever size you prefer, and use those instead. While being low cost, it can also even save you a lot of money by not having to buy nearly as many paper towels for cleaning up messes, wiping stuff down. Speaking of cleaning, swap out those plastic sponges for a bioplastic sponge or a wooden dish brush instead. Plastic sponges are not compostable, they are not recyclable, they are just not very good for the planet overall, they break down. Instead, opt for bioplastic sponges or wooden dish brushes that can be composted it at the end of their lives. I am obsessed with these bioplastic sponges. I They actually decompose. I did a test in my backyard. They also work really, really well. And I just really prefer using a sponge sometimes over brush or scrubber. I don't know, maybe that's just me. And for a wooden dish brush, there are a few options I have linked in the blog post from Earth Hero. They have tons of options from big options to small options and everything in between. Next is to try eco-friendly laundry detergent. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know I have reviewed uh, like 12 different laundry detergents, potentially a few more. And I'm working on a part four. I'm reviewing five more this winter, which is wild. But there are so many different options out there from liquid to powder to concentrated little tablets to concentrated sheets and everything in between, whatever you need for your needs. <laughs> kind of depends, like, do you want it to be fully recyclable? Do you want it to be mess-free? Do you care about PVA, a powder or a liquid? Here are a few brands that I recommend. If you want a laundry sheet, I recommend Kind Laundry. They were my favorite laundry sheet when I used them, but I no longer use laundry sheets. It's very up for debate and also it depends on your personal needs but I personally don't feel comfortable using laundry sheets because they contain PVA, which does not break down in our waterways unless there's specific microbes. And you can't be too sure about if those microbes are added or not. I don't use laundry sheets anymore. And you can learn more about laundry sheets. I have two videos on it that will be linked down below. If you're looking for a liquid, my favorite is from Dirty Labs. They come in fully recyclable aluminum bottles. Now it is not recycled aluminum and they don't take them back for refills. So it's not like the greatest, but I still think if you're looking for a liquid, it smells good, it works good. It's not in plastic. And then my favorite powder is from Meliora. It comes in fully recyclable or compostable packaging, and they also sell five gallon bucket bulk options, and they take their buckets back for reuse. Perhaps I should have made this next one number one, because as you have caught perhaps in this video, I love talking about recycling. I think recycling is really important, and that is why I encourage you as a beginner to actually learn how to recycle properly. Now I know recycling isn't going to save the planet. It is a very, very broken system that needs a lot of work, but there are two reasons why recycling is broken. One, it's not incentivized by the government. It's not incentivized by companies to take their stuff back and reuse it. And two, we as consumers are recycling so badly. The more that we follow the rules, the cleaner our recycling is, the more that it's sorted and we don't put trash in there. So before you buy anything on this list, I highly encourage you to do this first. Learn how to recycle properly for your area. And what you can do is just search, like I would search recycling Dayton, Ohio to get my local rules and regulations. Really easy swap is to change out your hand soaps throughout your house. There are so many different options for this as well from a liquid soap, a foaming soap, and even just soap bars. While a lot of our hand soap does come in plastic bottles that are recyclable, the pumps are not recyclable because they have metal components in them. So it's best to use something that we can just reuse and refill at home, such as Clean Colt's liquid hand soap that you can refill in your own pump or their pump. Eliora also has a foaming hand soap little tablet that you just add the water to at home. Again, you can reuse the bottle you already have or use or you can just get a simple hand soap bar next is swap to a plastic free shaving routine now a lot of people know what a safety razor is and about plastic free shaving like the actual razor itself but not a lot of people know about shave soap like zero waste shave soap, which is crazy. And it's also just crazy to think about the amount of waste that shaving creates from disposal razors to non-recyclable cans of shaving cream. It's a lot of waste. My favorite razor is from Leaf Shave and Dan agrees. I've used it on my legs. He's used it on his face. We both love it for all different reasons. And they also have a blade recycling program, which is really, really cool, making them a perfectly zero waste system. And then Dan has been using the same, maybe not the same, but same or similar shave soap for, I don't know, since before we even really started living zero waste because it's cheaper. That is from Badger. It's as as foamy as shaved cream, but with how much money it can save and how much waste it can reduce, I think it's a great swap. Okay, now we're gonna get into some habit changes. I guess we already did with recycling. Some more habit changes is to conserve water. There are so many ways you can conserve water depending on what works for you, but it's as simple as shutting off the water while you brush your teeth, 
shutting off the water while you suds up your hands, shortening your shower, not boiling as much water for your tea or your coffee. And saving water is important no matter where you live, if you live in a drought stricken area or a rainforest. And this habit change can again, not only save our precious resource water, but it can also save you money. Another habit change of course is to conserve energy. Once again, I feel like I should have a dollar for every time I say this, it can save energy, it can save fuel being burned and it can save you money. And again, this can be something as simple as shutting off the lights when you leave a room, like I'm using right now is just windows as natural lighting, unplugging devices that are not in use and so forth. I will leave some videos with more tips on water conservation, energy conservation down below. Stop using zipper bags from popular brands like Ziploc. They are non-recyclable. We use them for only a few seconds before they're thrown away and they can really get expensive over the long run. Instead, here are some reusable or rather compostable options. A reusable option is from Stasher Bag. They have so many different sizes and options that are reusable forever. They're dishwasher safe, they're microwave safe, freezer safe. Want a still disposable, but better for the planet option, I recommend Hold On. They're bioplastic, fully compostable. Um, I have tested their compostability and I found that they composted pretty well and they're less impactful to create than plastic. And then if you want something that's not a bag, this is like a silicone wrap essentially that is from Crumbles. I really, really like this option as someone who doesn't really like using stasher bags for sandwiches. More to that is to stop using plastic wrap. Again, it is a thin non-recyclable plastic. It can add up over the long run. Instead, let's do something reusable. There are several different types of reusable wax wraps from beeswax to soy wax if you're looking for a vegan option. There are silicone bowl covers or you can just use what you already have at home. You can just use containers instead of like putting plastic wrap over a bowl. Just transfer all that stuff into a container that already has a lid that goes with it. You could put a plate over that bowl. You could put a bowl over that bowl. There are several different ways that you can protect your items instead of using saran wrap. Bringing that back to the bathroom, let's try to switch to reusable makeup remover wipes this year. Plus these can be used for so many different things from not only makeup, but cleaning your whole face, wiping your glasses off. And this is something too that I have made some myself in the past. Like I had an old pillowcase that I just sewed and cut into squares. You can also just cut a t-shirt into squares with no sewing required. If you are gonna buy new, I highly recommend once again, buying something that is made from natural fibers like cotton or hemp. Another habit change to try is to try secondhand shopping this year. Maybe you're gonna try it for the first time. Maybe you've never been before. Or if you have gone thrifting before, try to thrift more this year. If you can, try shopping only secondhand. That would be really cool. Even the most perfect zero waster can't find everything they need secondhand, so don't sweat it. But even if you only buy a few things used this year versus a lot of things new this year, you're still going to be saving a lot of waste. Thrifting is great for the environment because it prevents stuff from being created new and also prevents stuff from going to the landfill. I made a full video on the importance of thrifting that you can check out down below. Next time you go to the grocery store, plan your grocery trip before you go. What I mean is bring a list with you. It really is that simple. And not just a list of like the things that you ran out of this week, but also what you plan to cook this week. For me, I find this really, really helpful because if I was to just go into the grocery store and just bought whatever I wanted that day, it might not be what I want throughout the rest of the week. I might not have a plan for it and it might just go to waste. Not only wasting food, which is really, really harmful to put food into the landfill, but also wasting money. Why would you throw your money away, literally? And honestly, there are so many more ways that you can prevent food waste that I really, really think you should, even as a beginner, prevent food waste any way that you can. But this is really the first step. What This is before you even bring any food into your house. Think about what you're going to actually eat this week. Will you actually use it? Do you have a plan for it? And you can learn more about the importance of not sending food to the landfill, linked below. Again, this one should have been much higher on the list and that is to use what you already have. Because guess what? The most sustainable thing is the thing that you already own. If you already have a reusable water bottle, use that one. Even if it's not perfect, even if it's not Clean Canteen or Hydrofask or Stanley, use it because you already have it, it's already going to serve a purpose. It could also look like using all of your wasteful Ziploc bags, all of your disposable paper plates before buying something reusable. Because if you were to just throw those perfectly good Ziploc bags away, that is so much more wasteful than actually getting some use out of them. And while all of the products that I listed today are sustainable and reusable and will help you reduce waste, they still require resources to create energy to ship, packaging. So there's no perfect brand new item that you can buy. So using what you already have is the most sustainable thing that you can do. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I hope that you found some ways so that you can live zero waste this year. Again, if I missed any really good beginner swaps for living zero waste, leave them down below so that we can all keep learning about our zero waste journey. Now, if you're like, this really was too easy for me, I'm more of an intermediate or advanced zero waster. Next week, we are talking about not only more beginner zero waste swaps, but also intermediate and advanced zero waste swaps, no matter where you are in your zero waste journey. I got that inspiration again from my zero waste New Year's resolutions video, which you can check out again above and below if you want more ways to live zero waste in 2024 or in 2025 if you're watching this next year. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate your time. Here's to a more zero waste year. I'll see you next week. Well, rather in the next video, 
If you haven't caught on yet, I'm posting every Sunday and Wednesday now, going back to my old original posting schedule twice a week. I hope you're enjoying it. If it's too much content for me, let me know and I'll back down. But hopefully you guys like seeing the extra content from me. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye guys. See, look, nobody there. No, nobody's there. Oh, my coffee. <laughs> I don't have object permanence.